But a lot of our policies, especially economic policies, are built on the idea that pain isn't just unavoidable, but necessary for a functional society. In a nutshell, conservative politics often revolve around tightening the national budget, cutting public spending, lowering taxes, deregulation, and generally just decreasing the reach and size of government. This is what's called... I mean, lowering taxes does seem like decreasing pain to me, but I mean, that would completely go against her argument. Anyway, let's, let us continue. Austerity, and it's the basis of Reaganomics. We have this idea that for the economy to work, we must go through a tough tightening of our belts. We have to suck it up and deal with not getting everything we want. And this is the line of thinking that a lot of people use when arguing against welfare programs. We can't just have whatever we want for free, that's not how it works. So a lot of our economic policies are built on the idea that pain is necessary for society to function. And you can also connect this to the Protestant work ethic and our obsession with self-made success stories and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. If things are hard, don't complain, it won't get you anywhere. Just suck it up and deal with the pain and move forward. Through she's, she's sort of like not really even addressing her what she's saying herself. Yeah, I know. She's is that, that good or bad? I mean, I Protestant work ethic now, she's coming out and saying that's bad? Well, I'm confused. What's she's saying, happening here? She's saying that the right believes that pain is necessary uh, for society. Right, like, to thrive. Like, yes. to thrive. People need to avoid pain to, you know, create pro-social societies, pro-social Well, not behaviors, avoid pain, but... She's talking about taking on painful tasks to achieve some goal. I mean, that's the context of everything she's saying. That's not really, but that's not really what she's saying. She's saying like, oh, the conservatives want to cut welfare spending because they believe that pain, such as like being poor, uh, is what motivates people to succeed, essentially. But she also connected it to the, she literally said the Protestant work ethic, so. Right. Wait, hold on one second. And pulling yourself up by your necessary for society to function. And you can also connect this to the Protestant work ethic and our obsession with self-made success stories and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. If things are hard, don't complain. It won't get you anywhere. Just suck it up and deal with the pain and move forward. So she's conflating whether pain is necessary and whether it's inevitable. These are two different things. Well, and she's also conflating pain working towards a goal, self-sacrifice for future gain. Yes. I mean, that's the whole idea behind the Protestant work ethic. That's yes. the whole idea behind this, the plaque in the gym that says no pain, no gain. <laughs> it's like... Yes, right. Right. This is basic humaning. Right. But she's not she's not throwing down a position on how she feels about the Protestant work ethic. Through this lens, pain is not just a good thing, but a necessary thing. Any economy not built on pain is just a fantasy for babies. Well, I mean, that's true. <laughs> I yeah. think. Um, I'm curious to see... I don't think she lays out how a, how the alternative. I think she just says that's capitalism essentially. I don't think she lays out an alternative to this. Automation, baby, come on. But it's it doesn't matter. Even if everything is automated, and we had free energy, and free replicators, our society would still be based around pain. Because there would still be a status hierarchy that is created, and people that are not succeeding the status hierarchy would be would, in pain. Would be in pain, yeah. right? Why can't I be as popular as, as Zobi? Right. Why can't I be as popular as Zobi, the number one, you know, StarCraft right. 10 player, right? Or whatever the fuck's going on a thousand years from now. So. Oh. Do you know but, the name of the woman we're watching her video right now? Zobi, yeah. So. Okay. Space B, yes. Is she the number one StarCraft player? I wonder. I, I'm assuming not. <laughs> okay. She looks like she would be awesome at StarCraft, but... But What's this that? is just the capitalist realism talking. Oh, no! <laughs> See, I knew you'd love this video. 
It's just a capitalist realism talking. Uh-huh. Don't you see, Sitch? We can all sit around in our hammocks all day long. We don't we don't need to work. Society doesn't function on people working, Sitch. God, but this is this is so weird because you pain lover. <laughs> like people that advocate for communism, I've never heard them say like it's the opposite. They're like, oh, you know, yeah, we all have to work as a community and sacrifice, you know, uh, together to build a better world. They're not, the, you know, the communists are not even making an argument that there's going to be a pain-free future or anything. Like, I, I don't know what she's even talking about. Right, yeah. They Not only it's, that, they argue, I mean, it seems more like a pain-filled future. They argue that... We don't need all this choice in the marketplace. You know, we one car will do. This is how we flatten hierarchies. <laughs> well, well, most of them don't argue that directly. Okay, like that might be a consequence of, some, no, of some, what their policies are, but that's not general. I have heard many people argue this yeah. directly. Okay, that we don't need all of this choice. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. All that choice. Come on, it's just wasted energy. Right. I mean, I heard Loki give that speech in the first Avengers movie to Does Captain he? America. Oh. So. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if true. that's who you're talking about. No. I've literally ar- argued with socialists that make this argument that mm. all that, in, you know, when I bring up the argument about innovation, they're like, yeah, we don't need innovation. You don't understand. <laughs> Innovation is a waste. Mm. We don't need 10 different types of iPhone. We just need one iPhone <laughs> forever. That the government says is good. Yeah. Or good enough. Yeah. This was the the Soviet model. Do you know that? They were going to, yes, instead of yeah. beating them on diversity of products, they were just going to do one product forever. Right. Very sad. I mean, what, listen, we just got 5G, Adam. Why do we need 6G? Isn't 5G good enough? No. <laughs> I want instantaneous. <laughs> we can always... Wait, I thought she was all about we can always do better and change the system and all. What happened to that? Yeah. Zobie, you're letting me down here. Well, she. I mean, to be clear, she didn't make that argument. Right. But. Yes, she did. She said the left is predisposed towards changing the system. No, no, no. I'm saying she didn't make the communist, we only need one of everything argument. Right. This is directly against capitalism, though. But, yeah, but her saying that only capitalism creates a system where pain is required, to me, that is, this is a total fantasy. We've entered the realm of childhood fantasy here. I, I don't know what communist system she thinks exists that's pain free. Which system has more dynamism and change, capitalism or communism? Capitalism, honestly. Yeah, um, obviously. Yeah. yeah, I thought we were. Right. I thought we were on board with. I thought it was the conservatives that were like against change and change, the, right? Yeah, yeah, and the it was the those radical leftists that were like, "Oh, change is good. We can change the system. We need a dynamically changing system." Right. Except. If it's capitalistic, then that's a little... I don't like that kind of change. <laughs> no. Put that away. Get that away. This is just a capitalist mindset talking. Right. That's right. a bad kind of change. Oh, God. So many contradictions. I, I don't know how you could make this bold of a claim without giving... You any, need to give an example. If you're going to make a bold evidence? claim, like an economy or society could exist without a pain threat element to it you Mm. need to give an example of how that's going to function because i don't see it look you just get rid of all all criminal law (laughs) (laughs) i think it's gonna cause a lot of pain actually it is but you know it's a different kind of pain right that's true that is true it is a different kind of pain it's more like all against all it's more like the might kind of makes right pain right yeah right yeah, I don't like that. We're so ingrained in this system that necessitates an underclass that we can't see any alternative. But to- And then she just, you like how she just slides that in there? Here, let me slide this idea of the underclass in here. Well, she's kind of conflated necessity 
I mean, she's kind of conflated underclass with pain, which yes. isn't exactly what we're talking about, or right. I think anyone's really talking about um, specifically. Right. And I don't think capitalism requires an underclass either at all. I don't see why that's required. Yeah. Yeah, I don't either. To Prager U, a group founded on the principles of capitalism and the free marketplace of ideas, pain and competition and ruthlessness are the only viable options. But now, there's a now I know where Christian got. We're both struggling to pause because we're I so true right now. Now I know where P Christian got his stereotype of conservatives from. It was from well, Zobie's channel. I'm disappointed because the beginning part, the first half of her video. Even if I disagree with it, I felt like she was being, you know, good faith. Yeah, some not good faith, but charitable. Like, not even charitable, just more nuanced, more intelligent, reasonable, and, more reasonable, more exploratory in the idea that is being profited. Right. But now she's just conflating like all sorts of things that don't even make sense. So like ruthlessness and pain, like that. These are completely irrelevant. Like. You need, and I don't even know how you could say this. I think there are some people that are highly independently motivated. And this is why this is weird. She literally brought this up in the beginning of the conversation. She brought up regulatory focus theory, okay? Remember, she brought up regulatory focus theory mm -hmm. that says that there's two types of people. There are people that are motivated by success, and there are people that are motivated by avoiding pain. Right. And she even labeled people on the left as people motivated by avoiding pain. Right. So if you have a society, so if she accepts that and she agrees with that, how can you construct a society that doesn't have pain? Because if, even if you could construct that, that would <laughs> mean that everyone on the left is not motivated by anything. Would have no motivation to do anything. Which is kind of the world that they want. <laughs> yeah, but this was her argument. This is why I'm saying it sounds like she's contradicting her own argument. She literally laid this out in the beginning of the video that people on the left are motivated by avoiding pain. Well, then if there's no pain, though, then there's no motivation. Yeah, but that's a, that is the communist utopia right there. You just hang out in the hammock all day. I guess. But that's, I mean, that's a straw man, you know, to be fair. That's not what that's they That's a straw man of communism. For. Yes, they don't advocate. For that. That's not what they say communism is going to be. But I they're mean, like, well, no, it's just I joint feel. ownership of businesses, you know. Yeah, so you can go hang out in the hammock. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I don't, to me, this is such a massive flaw in the thinking of, of this video. I just, I don't know how this snuck by her without, without her realizing it. 